There should be. Okay, now we got it. Okay. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, welcome all today. It's wonderful you guys were able to make it after all the activity and the excitement of this past week. Um, we also welcome those who are with us online, um, particularly those who are not able to make it due to the um, after effects of the storm. Our heart, our heart and our prayers go out to all those who, have, who have suffered losses, losses from the hurricane. Um, the assertion that you're in our prayers. Also, please reach out if there's anything we can do to help you meet any need that you might have, and we'll do what we are able to do. Um, just reminded that our, our, our announcements typically can be found on, on contacts, um, but there are some uh, big events taking place this, this coming week. Um, first of all, beginning this Wednesday, we'll be offering two new Bible studies. Um, the first is our new members class on life and God's grace. The second is a book study on the book of about biblical interpretation for everyone. Both classes will begin with evening prayer and the same crew at 6 o'clock. So if you want to come for um, come at 6 o'clock, we'll begin at that time with the with, um, with prayer. And, all, and then uh, um, we will conclude the Bible studies at, at 7.30. And we hope to see as many of you as, as can make it. Also, this Friday is a is an exciting event which is taking place. This Friday we'll be um, celebrating Oktoberfest. We don't want anybody to say they didn't know about it or hear about it because it's been advertised very well in, in the Welcome Center. And also, so remember this 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 Friday, um, Oktoberfest. Um, this is meant to be both a church and, and school event as a way of getting together and enjoying the evening with food and drink. And fellowship and entertainment. Um, you'll, you'll see more details about that in the, um, in the Welcome Center. And finally, also this, this weekend, we'll be, we will be hosting the um, circuit forum for the Dallas County our Circuit. That's made up of our sister churches, a, um, a good friend of pastors, and a professor at the seminary in, in Fort Wayne. Um, he, Dr. Peppercorn um, will be the speaker, and he'll be um, preaching at Grace as well next weekend. The event runs from 2 to 5 on Sunday, um, October 6th, and all are welcome to that event. There's an announcement we need to make, so let's make our beginning, and please stand. As we make our beginning, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now take a few moments in silent reflection. Lord, have mercy. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgive you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. 
Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O you, his angels, you mighty ones, who do his work, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and let all that is within me bless his holy name. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the service of angels and men in a wonderful order. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointed appointment they may also help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Good evening. The Old Testament reading for the festival of St. Michael and all angels is from Daniel, the 10th and 12th chapters. And, behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved and understood the words that I speak to you. Stand up, for now I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. And he, then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for the first day you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God. Your words have been heard 
and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to me to help me, for I was there with the kings of Persia and came to make you understand what has happened to your people in the latter days, for the vision for the days yet to come. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince, who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to the afterlife and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who lead many to righteous like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Revelation, the 12th chapter. Now war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon, his angels, fought back, but he was deferred, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, and that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and power and kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them night and day before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood, the lamb, and the word of the testimony, for they are loved not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, all heavens, and you will dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is written in St. Luke, 10th chapter. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subjected to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord.
great cloud of witnesses. We thank you, Lord, for the angels also who, who are your servants. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be accepted in your sight. Amen. The word for today's meditation come from the epistle lesson which we read previously. Um, don't know if you guys noticed when we came in today, um, the church looks a little different. Um, it's all dressed in white. And the reason for that is not because earlier today there was a wedding, but because today is a, is a special festival day in the church. Actually, tomorrow is that festival day in St. Michael and all the angels. Um, and it's wonderful to celebrate that day and to remember that day. Um, as you came in, I don't know if any of you guys noticed coming in, but as you go out, you may, may take a peek on the, on the bench which is out there. I have an icon which I, I acquired um, earlier this year. It's an icon of, of St. Michael and, well, St. Michael. And St. Michael is, is depicted as, as an angel with a spear in his hand, and he has Saint or a dragon pinned down, ready to, to defeat him. Um, and the reason for that image is, is what came from today's um, e epistle lesson, or the, the, the second reading, from the book of Revelation. And in this book, book um, it, it, it talks about this, this battle which is going on. Um, but before we get in, into that, just want to let you guys know how happy, especially Marco, is to be here in the United States at this time of year. I say that because the, the town where we live in, in Guatemala is called, or is called Sa San Miguel Dueño, or St. Michael Dueño. And one thing which happens in Guatemala is every town, every village, has a patron saint. And when it's a time for their patron saint, it's usually a week-long festival in which they, they have, have a, a week-long party. In the Duenas, or San Miguel Duenas, that week-long party goes on for weeks, not just days. And what they do down there as well is they like to celebrate with, with fireworks. And not the beautiful fireworks with lots of colors, the boom. And just suffice to say, Marco is happy to be here and, and away from that. Um, in our text today, um, there's some things that need to be stated to, to kind of lay down the, the um, groundwork of, of what's taking place. Because one thing which is important to remember in, in the book of Revelation is that to understand it properly, you need to understand the Old Testament. And it's beautifully demonstrated in, in today's reading. Um, first of all, you heard in the, in the story or in the tales, there is a woman. The woman that is talked about here is depicts Mary, the mother of our Lord. Because when, the, when Mary gave birth to the child, if you read earlier in, in the chapter, you would have seen that the dragon had its intent to devour this child which was newly born. After that, there is a red dragon. And the red dragon depicts Satan and Satan's attempt to, to thwart God's plan and God's kingdom. Next is spoken of is the wilderness. And the wilderness is our place here on earth where we live in hostile territory away from the kingdom of God. The, the, um, the stars that we talked about represent the, the fallen angels, those who, fell, who sided with Satan and were cast out of heaven. And the child is Jesus. As we see this story, we see, as I said, stated earlier, it's, it's important to understand the Old Testament to understand what's going on in the text. Um, we remember, we need to go back to the garden. Back to the garden where at first everything was beautiful. Everything was wonderful. And God said, it is good. Where God would walk in the garden and man would walk with him. 
that walk went uninterrupted until the day that the deceiver came along, the serpent. Here it refers to the Satan, that ancient serpent. The serpent came and tempted. Eve was deceived, Adam rebelled, and sin came into the world. Prior to this, Adam and Eve walked wonderfully with God in a wonderful relationship. But once they sinned, once they ate that forbidden fruit, that relationship with God was broken. At that point, when, the, when they heard God in the garden, they hid themselves. That voice of God, which up to that point had been one of wonderful fellowship, was now one that needed to seek judgment. That also needed to cast them out of the garden. So as since that point, there has been separation between man and God. God wants and always wanted for that relationship to be restored. And so, up to this point, everything was good. But now, the voice was God, of God was something that they feared. And the war was on. Today's text, this Revelation 12, talks about what happened in a brief nutshell. That a child was born that, that the serpent wanted to devour. Remember what happened shortly after the wise men came. Herod sent, sent soldiers to Bethlehem to kill all the boys who were two years and younger. Because the dragon wanted to devour the, the child that was born. And they went to Egypt. Later on, the tempter once again came. If you are the Son of God, do this. But the son, the child, was faithful and did not heed the voice of the serpent or of, of Satan, unlike what happened in the garden. Another time, the voice came down. The voice of the serpent cried out, If you are the Son of God, come down from the, from the cross. And then we'll believe you. But once again, the child remained faithful. There on the cross, the battle was fought and the battle was won. The child has prophesied in, to the serpent in the garden that the seed of, of Eve crushed the ser serpent's head, even though the serpent bruised his heel. So the victory cry went out. Jesus lived, and Jesus won. There on the cross, the victory was won. The battle, our battle, our war has been won. Because on the cross, the cry went out, it is finished. It is finished. The debt of sin has been paid in full. Your sins are forgiven, and death has been defeated. Easter announces to us that life has been restored. Jesus is indeed the resurrection and the life. And so the cry goes out, the victory has been won. But still, God, the voice of God speaks. And the question is, when we hear that voice, how do we respond? Satan hopes that we respond in fear, that we hide, that we are angry with God because of what, because of our broken relationship, because that's what Satan does. It's interesting that in this in this reading, there are three titles or three names that are given for Satan. One is the devil, one is Satan, and the other is the great deceiver. The devil. The Greek word is diabolos. It's interesting that when it's not translated as the devil, or it's, and it's, it appears as a noun, diabolos, its translation is something like malicious God. 
So that's what Satan does. He tries to pit one against the other. Because that's what the word diabolus means, is to set one against the other. And what Satan wants us wants to do is set us one against each other, but more importantly, set us against God. So that we hear when we hear the voice of God, what we hear is a voice of judgment. Have you ever thought about what we say as we begin our worship? I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I've done, by what I've left done. I do not deserve to be your child. I deserve nothing but eternal judgment. That's the voice of fear. But the, but the reason why we respond differently is because we know that the God, God that we cry out to is the God who has said to us in our baptism, you are my child. He's a God who spoke from the cross and says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's the, our Lord Jesus who speaks to us and says, this is my body. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. We hear the voice of God, and we know that our God is a loving God. And so we respond not in fear, but in hope and in faith and in love. Satan is the adversary. That's what Satan means, enemy or adversary. And he has always pitted himself against God and his people. And the other thing is the great deceiver. All these, all these names, all these actions have one intent. And that intent is for us, when we hear the, the footsteps of our God, or when we hear his voice, we run away in fear. We respond with anger to who God is and what our God has done. But by his grace, he has called us to be his people. And while we are his people, we, like the, like the woman and the child, live in the wilderness. We live in hostile territory. We live among people who do not want anything to, to do with the church. Jesus said this would happen. In this world you will have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I send you out as sheep among wolves. The church lives in the wilderness. We live in hostile territory. But our God is with us. And as we live in the wilderness, there are different ways that we can respond to that. I'm going to put, propose four. If you look in, earlier in Revelation, you'll see that there are seven ways that the church responds. But one way that the church can respond is by living in isolation. We, can, we separate ourselves from the world. We have a nice, cozy little place here in Grace Lutheran Church. But we think nothing about what's going on around us. The choice to ourselves and the, and the gifts of our God with word and sacrament ministry. But don't hear the cries of those who are out and about around us. Another way that the church can respond is by thinking that we have a voice when the world around us doesn't want to hear what we have to say. When they look at the church and they say that we're just Angry old men crying out, get off my lawn. The church can do another thing. The church can conform. The church can be no different than the culture around us. In the, in the, in the attempt to be loving to the community, they would not call sin, sin, but embrace it. And thus, lose their saltiness and lose their life. Or the church can be what Jesus calls us to be, to be the light and the salt. The church can be hospitable and, and can engage the world around us. Not on our terms, but on the Lord's terms. 
But in all of this, one thing we need to remember is that God does not abandon his church. God still comes to walk with us. God still comes to us and gives us his gifts. We are fighting a spiritual battle. Paul reminds us of that. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. Our enemy is not another person, is not another group of people. The enemy is full and it's always been Satan. Working in the lives of people who he's deceived and created anger against God. And as we fight this battle, one thing that he reminds us is that we do not fight this battle alone. The Lord fights by our side. One of my favorite events in the Old Testament in happened with Elijah. Elijah was living in a town by the name of Dothan. And while he was living there, he was, he was giving insights into the, to the um, soldiers about the enemy tactics. So much so that the Assyrians, the ones who were attacking, thought there was a spy in their midst. But they were told, no, there's not a spy. There's this prophet, Elijah, who's telling them everything that we're going to do. And so the Assyrians came to take care of, of, of Elijah and to take him out. They surrounded the town of Dothan with the intent of taking Elijah's life. Elijah's servant was petrified. He would ask Elijah, why aren't you afraid? To which Elijah responded, those who are with us are more than those who are against us. And he asked the Lord to open up Elijah's eyes, and then Elijah saw the reality. His reality is also our reality. They were surrounded by the angels of our, of our, of our God. We celebrate that, that same reality every time we're gathered together. The words I love is that spoken just before we sing, Holy, 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 the song of the angels. With angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name. I really wish that we could see all that's going on as we gather together to worship. Because there are more here than what we can see. We are surrounded by our God and by the company of heaven. And so we rejoice. We rejoice in our God because our God continues to speak to us. Our God continues to cry out. And I pray that as we hear the God of voice, God, uh, God's voice, we would hear it that as a loving God who calls us to himself, calls us to a new life, a life, a life of forgiveness, and also a life of ministry. And as he sends us out, we know that we are not fighting alone. For if God is with us, who can be against us? And as we go out as well, we rejoice because of all that our God has done and all that our God has given to us. Now, I know that some of you may not be, be, be happy with what I'm about to say because, because um, in the searching football team in, in, or soccer team in, in um, London called Liverpool, and Liverpool's thing is we, ne we will ne never walk alone. That's God's promise to us. We will never walk alone because our God is with us. The company of heaven is with us. The angels are with us as we go out as his people to share the goodness of God. And as he speaks to us, we hear his voice. Amen. May the grace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in faith and to life everlasting. Amen. Please stand as we continue by confessing our Christian faith in the words of Nicene Creed. I believe, Lord God, Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, 
by whom all things were made, who for us to men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. The kingdom will have no end. Now I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophet. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism of the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Remember, Lord, your holy church, May your holy angels watch over her and guard her. Grant her peace and unity throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Remember Matthew, our synod president, James, our district president, and all pastors, teachers, deaconesses, and servants of your church. Strengthen them in the true faith and enable them to teach it well. Lord, in your mercy. Okay. Remember our president, our public servants, and all our armed forces. Guide, bless, protect, and uphold them in honor. Be with the electorate in Kentucky, Kansas, Illinois, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Maine, that they would be moved to vote and prayerfully consider doing so according to your will and your ways. Bring all nations into your ways of peace and justice. In your kindness and love, grant us a respite from unfavorable weather and an abundance of the fruits of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Remember all who suffer for your name, all who are in prison, the hungry, the ill-clad, the poor, and the lonely, those who travel and those who cry out to you in their time of need. Especially on our prayers are those who have asked for their prayers, including Patty, the Weaver family, all those impacted by Hurricane Helene, Grant that your holy angels may be with them also, always, and that the evil foe may have no power over them. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, your Son instituted the Holy Supper for the forgiveness of our sins. Give us humble hearts to receive this blessed sacrament with thanksgiving and strengthen us to do the same in our daily lives of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the service of angels, men in a wonderful order. Mercifully grant us, grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may also help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Sorry, I forgot to ask you to sit down for the prayer. Um, at this time, we remember the, um, our offering. Thank you to, for those who offered, presented their offering online. Um, if you brought your offering today, we ask that you would bring it forward on 